We are recording. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we are now recording. Um, all right, so this is um, uh, Trailblazer Community Group for Portland, Salesforce Admin Group in Portland, Oregon. Um, let me get my phone back. Uh, my name is, sorry, my name is Michael Montez. I am a co-leader here. Uh, I work for NORC based out of the University of Chicago. Um, and I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for since 2011. And my co-leader here is Allison. Hi, I've already introduced myself, but yeah, I've been in the ecosystem since, well, prior to 2011, but um, an admin since about then as well. Yeah. And um, so just a couple of quick notes for what's coming up, hopefully. Um, not next week, but the week after, I will I will be doing a presentation for everybody about flows and screen flows specifically. How I'm how our team uses screen flows to kind of take the guesswork out of what some of our users should be doing, how they should be work, I dare, I dare say how they should be working, but uh, you know how to how we've set things up and what the best path of least resistance is for them. So we've got we use we leverage screen flows heavily at, at our org in our org. So um, I've got a presentation for everybody on how we use screen flows and how to think about screen flows and things like that. So if you can join us the week, uh, the, the date, the exact date is TBD, but it will be in two weeks, week of May 20th. And then July 10th is Force Landia here in Portland. So if you haven't attended, I highly recommend it. If you have attended, I also highly recommend it. Um, but you already know how great it is. So you probably already know that. That's on July 10th. So let us get started. So Summer 24 release notes are out. The uh, sandboxes should start turning over uh, sometime tomorrow, um, Friday the 10th of May. So check your sandboxes for um, this functionality starting tomorrow, uh, some of your sandboxes. So here's just some of the uh, some of the items that we're gonna have. These are in the general enhancement section. And uh, one of the new things that I did not know about, and I don't know if that um, is this whole default no reply org, wide email address, you have to populate one of these now. You're gonna to have to populate this uh, soon and it's gonna actually be enforced in coming releases. But if you do any kind of email sending, if your sales team or your support team, they do any kind of email sending, you need to have a default no reply address uh, added to your org. So if you don't have one already, just get ready for that. Also, there's a new setup domain. Um, so if you see here, it says, if you, then this only applies if you like or have a firewall and you block certain domains in your firewall. Uh, starting in summer, there will be, all of the setup pages will be behind the subdomain or this subsection called salesforce-setup.com. So um, if you don't have that currently in your allow list or in your firewall, you have to have that added to your, um, to your uh, firewall exception list. It's just something to think about as well. And then um, there's a cookie use. So I don't know if, if everybody knows about Google kind of deprecating or supposedly deprecating or, or kind of leaning less on the use of cookies and third-party cookies um, and leveraging first-party cookies. Uh, this, there is a, a required feature, um, required update that you'll want to turn on for that allows first party cookies because when you use sale, when you're in Salesforce and you're in the setup section, different other pages, the way that pages load is they do, they do a lot of cookie back and forth. They share a lot of information between the cookies to load a page here and then load a page for there and then fill the whole section. And so if you don't have first party cookies enabled or, or you're not using it correctly, um, it will, the page won't load properly. So you can turn that on and turn it off uh, appropriately and test it before it goes live which um, I don't know the, the live date. Again, check your status at salesforce.com to see when your org will actually roll over to the new summer release uh, itself. But Sandbox is populated tomorrow. Okay. And then the last item in general is um, there's a new search manager, which allows the admins to have certain objects always be searched, have certain objects, um, you know, like never, not never, but be searched uh, less frequently. You can search, select channels, you can select filters. 
Um, and then you can assign those channels, filters, and, and other kind of always search this object and assign those, um, you know, uh, personas, if you will, to different types of users, different profiles or different permission sets. So if you have a support team, you always want the support team to search the knowledge base. No matter what they search for, they're going to always search the knowledge base, even if it's not knowledge, not a knowledge related thing. And if you've got a sales team, you always want the sales team to search leads or something like along those lines. Now, this doesn't restrict what they search specifically, but you can do that as well. You can add filters. So there's a new search manager feature that's coming. So this is going to help uh, users with help you help users do better searching within Salesforce. Um, yeah. So. Okay, so the big release, and we got this, if you were with us for the Trailblazer uh, recap, the big release is all the permissions summaries that are coming to the setup section of Salesforce. So user permissions and access, public groups, permission sets, permission set groups, they're all gonna have this new unified summaries section, excuse me, where you can go in, into a, a user, and you can see a lot of these features here, like um, this user has this permission set. And what does this permission set entail? What does it allow me to see? What does it allow me to edit? What does it allow me to, you know, what is the CRUD? What um, a public group, where is this public group being leveraged within the back end? Is it part of a flow? Is it part of a, um, a profile? Is it assigned to a permission set? What is, you know, all these kinds of things. So um, these summaries, within the in this in these sections are are really the big thing is that they're all unified and they all have consistency across all the various elements that a user would need to, to look at or a, an admin would need to look at so um it was a big big put there's a big push on this um from cheryl's team uh through the setup and through user management and through permissions and permission sets and, and groups um profile part of the profile retirement that's not no longer retirement, but um, you will notice when you log in uh, tomorrow and days after how this look and feel is now consistent across all the different types of um, access elements within Salesforce. Uh, let's see. There's another element that that is new, the net new. It's called user access policy. So. When you set up a, this is a basically a flow or a series of flows that run automatically whenever a user is created and meets criteria. So you can set the criteria. Um, so you could say that if I add a user and their um, role is role X, then you automatically assign permission set one, permission set two, permission set seven, and permission set group three you can set that up so you don't have to remember to do all of those things for those different types of users and, if, and you have different criteria that you can set and if this equals that then add this thing whether it's a, a profile or permission set um, a package access to a package put them in a group uh, add them to a public group uh, things like that so it's very powerful and this replaces some of the flows that we actually have when we create a new user we add them to a couple of different chatter groups and other groups now we could use permit, um, user access policies. Whenever we add a user, they're gonna get these things by default. And then if they're this type of user, they get this. If they're this type of user, they get that. And if they're this type of user, they get this and that, whatever. The other thing that this uh, access policies allows for is if you need to migrate a subset of your users or even all of your users from one, let's say permission set to another, you can actually set up a user access policy, apply that policy, and then execute the policy and it'll update all of the users um, for you in the system rather than doing like an export and doing a an export of your data making adjustments to your spreadsheet and then pushing the data back up that would be uh, user access policy would be how you would go forward and make mass changes to, to use some of your users um let's see the ability to freeze a user is now a permission set, or now is now a permission that you can apply to a permission set or a subset of users. So if you happen to have delegated users that are doing um, user management, rather than give them all the keys to the castle for um, the, the backend, 
you can actually just give them this one or two permissions um, to look at, to give them the ability to, to free the user or to give them the ability to monitor the login history. So if you've got, I don't know, maybe a sales rep manager or something who wants to see, are my is my sales team logging in? You can give them monitor login history permission, just that one permission, and they could go to a report and see that kind of information. So before you actually had to do manage users and it would open up many more doors than they, they might have needed. So again, this is a, the um, the idea of least privilege um, for your users is in play here as they start to as they start to kind of break all those big permissions that are part of Salesforce into smaller bite-sized pieces of just the functionality that makes sense for a user. Okay, now some of the UI changes, some of the lightning updates. We talked about it this also. Um, blank space is now available. So everybody was asking for blank space to come back. It's now available in the lightning uh, dynamic forms or lightning enabled pages. So you can add, currently you can add fields, right? You can drop fields into the dynamic form section. Now you can actually add a blank space so that your fields line up. And you can see an example here uh, on the on the left side, it's uh, uh, when you don't have a blank space, you can see how the phone number and then the blank space below that, and then the, it doesn't kind of adjust because it's just going to be, it's going to fill in with the billing address. And then you can see on the right side, they've added a blank space below the phone number and the two fields align um, because the blank space takes up the same size as the billing address and it just makes your page layout's a little cleaner. So um, a couple of caveats on that is that the blank space component is considered a field. So you still have a hundred field limit and that includes blank spaces, but uh, hopefully you don't have too many uh, fields on there. All right. Also in the Lightning App Builder, um, there's three other features here that, so one of them that I really am excited about, and one that is conditional visibility for tabs. So if you don't know, you or if, excuse me, if you haven't used it, Lightning App Builder, you can conditionally show or hide groups or components within the Lightning page. Now you can actually conditionally show or hide individual tabs within the tabs component. You can add a task component, but you would actually show or hide the entire component. Now you can show or hide the component as well as show or hide the individual tab. So that's really exciting because we have some tabs that are just for certain teams. And right now there is a tab with contents that's blank because we can't hide the tab, but we can hide the content. Um, now we can actually just hide the whole tab and nobody will know that it even exists. Um, if you've got field density settings on your Lightning Record page. This will now uh, respect, if you will, density settings. So if you have uh, your Lightning Record pages are compact or comfortable, it'll respect compact or comfortable. Um, so that way, you know, that's new. And then the other thing is some rich text headings are predefined in the uh, rich text editor of Lightning Pages now. So. You can see how before you would do like, a, you would have to do your own bold, your own italics, your own sizes. Now you can just highlight the text and pick from those pre predefined settings like normal heading one, heading two, um, to uh, predefine some sizes, but also to put a wrapper around that text. It's an old uh, CSS trick, but um, it's now available in the app builder. Okay. If anybody has Einstein, and they've turned on the Einstein AI, which I am still unsure of whether or not, and we won't know until tomorrow, you can turn it on for free and use some of these features, or if you have to actually pay for it, no matter what, all the documentation says, contact your sales rep for AI pricing or Einstein AI pricing. So I don't know if this is gonna be just kind of built, baked into the, into, into the background, or if you actually have to turn it on or pay for it. But the formula syntax errors, with Einstein um, is rolling out tomorrow, uh, you know, in this release. So you can actually go to a formula box in Salesforce, and there should be a little button that says, um, what's wrong with this formula, basically, or tell me about this formula, and it'll give you a summary, or it'll tell you the syntax. You know, this thing is doing, this formula is doing the, this stuff, and that's what it's supposed to tell you. I haven't played with it at all, 
and I'll know more tomorrow, but um, that's coming. So I don't know if anybody's had a chance to uh, to use that yet. But. Well, yeah, I've used chat GPT too. Like, where is my extra parentheses? <laughs> um, yeah. Stuff like right. that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. And then um, the next line here is, so when you add a new custom field, um, one of the things that was missing when you would add a custom field, you go through the custom field wizard. We've all been there. Name, type, or type, name, um, visibility and then add it to the page layout. Well, lightning pages were not included in that section when you would add it to the page layout. With the, the release coming up, a new section will be there that says, which dynamic pages would you like to add this field to? So um, so that's nice. So it's another step in the new, new custom field wizard, but it allows you to say, I want to add it to this lightning page dynamic section and this lightning page dynamic section. Um, so it'll, those will be there. And then the last thing here is dynamic forms is now, they now show up under where is this used? So if you had a field and you, you know, you have a custom field and you click where is this used, it'll show you flows, it'll show you reports, it'll show you report types, but it would not show you dynamic sections, dynamic, lightning dynamic pages within that area. Now it will show, show it to you and you can click on the link and actually take you to the page as well. So they fixed it. I think it was partially a bug and partially not working, not just not working or not enabled, but now it'll be part of that. So where is this used is getting some uh, additional functionality for that. Okay, so Salesforce flow. Okay, new component called a repeater component. So, if you wanted, the example is, I want to collect a list of beneficiaries from a screen flow. So you put in a repeater component and then you add the name and let's say first name, last name and email address. Those are your three things. You put that in there and that repeater component will say, when, you, when it goes live or when you just um, deploy it, it'll say, add another one. Would you like to add another one? Would you like to add another one? Um, so that's how you can kind of do all those pieces uh, with that. Let's see here. Oh. Marjorie, you got unmuted. There we go. Couldn't find the button, so I'm sorry. Um, and so, yeah, the, that's the repeater component. So it'll just allow you to kind of build multiple um contacts multiple leads from within the screen flow single screen flow element you don't have to build it three times and change all the names if you do a search if users have a search field um sorry when you add an address you can enable a feature that will allow the search to use google maps as they type the address in and return addresses and you can just kind of pick the address you want so we've, I think we've all seen this in, on the internet, but if I go to an address and I type in 2634 North Southeast 48, it'll start to populate like Portland, Oregon, Gresham, uh, Seattle, like what 40th do you want? And then you can actually just pick the one you want. You can enable that in the screen flow for the address fields. Um, that'll be soon. So uh, when they select the field, when they select the address, all the fields will get populated in the back end including some new fields, which are um, uh, territory uh, country code. And if you use state and country pick list, as well as some of the other like uh, zip plus five uh, fields. So they all kind of just kind of get moved over. So anything that's in the Google Maps API will get pulled into it as well. And then there's two new field of, uh, options for you is disable field, which um, Disable field, you set it to true. The users cannot navigate to it or modify the field in the component. And then there's read only fields, which will show the data, but you can't edit the data, you can't modify the data in the field. I don't understand the disable field just yet, but I think you can turn it on, turn it off. Um, so you can say, if this, is, if this is true, then the field is disabled. If it becomes false, or if it's false, then enable it and allow the user to enter. I think one of the examples they used at DX was, if you have a checkbox and you have to, you have the user would have to say, 
I have read and understand the requirements. Check the box when you have read and understand the requirements. Then when you check the box, then the fields below it become enabled and you can go from disabled to enabled and you can, they can, you can then edit it. But we'll all play with that and learn together um, starting tomorrow. Take a slip here. Okay. <clears throat> so this is new, obviously. Is blank and is empty are two new operators that are going to be making their way into the flow uh, decision elements. Um, you know, any of the criteria elements. And this is supposed to make it simpler for all of us who, who forget whether or not we have to use is blank, is null, or equals blank <laughs> when you're doing your criteria. Um, so is blank is uh, we'll check for text values that contain no characters or only contain white space. You can say is blank equals true. And then if a collection, if I go say, uh, I do a get records and I say, go get all the accounts that are in uh, country A, if, the re if, the re if you return a collection with no records in it, the collection is empty. You can actually, rather than saying, you would have to do a decision um, before you say, take a decision, is this collection um, true? Like, is there a record in the collection? Now you just say, is the collection empty, is empty. So it's specifically for collections. Is the collection empty, true or false? If, it's tr if it is empty, do this. If it's not empty, do that. So this should make things a little bit easier for all of us who are, like myself, who just, I just did this, <laughs> like right before this, we started here, is I was putting in the thing that said, if my record is, is it is null? Is it blank? If it's an ID, if it's text, if it's a date, so I, which of these things do I use? I always forget. So now you can just use this one and it'll check appropriately. Um, so if you're using a screen flow or using some other record uh, creation element within a flow, one of the things that you may want to do is you want to check for a duplicate before you create that record. So if a user just enters in, um, we have a lot of stuff with the, um, the CDC. So if somebody goes in and says CDC, and it's at this address and this is the phone number and they say create a new record with one of my flow with one of our flows we now have an option to say okay well before we go and create that record let's go check and see if there is a cdc that already exists is there an account that already exists with this criteria and if so then we can either skip skip the ad or we can do something else and you can see here you can if you find a record do you update the record if you find a record do you do something else to the record so this is a new uh functionality called check for duplicates and it allows you to put it on there before you create any records from a create step. Um, yeah. If anybody's using scheduled flows, uh, one of the pain points was that you couldn't really debug them very well. Now you can debug a scheduled flow just like any other flow um, where you can give it an ID, you can select the record you want to debug off of, and you give it an ID and enter the criteria and then run the task. So that's nice, they've cleaned that up. Um, and then the other thing for all of us heavy users of Salesforce flows is a new app called the Automation App, the Automation Lightning App. And this is going to not replace, but supersede the flows section in the back end. So if you go to setup, type in flows, you'll go to the flows, you have the big list. Now you can actually go to the uh, the nine dots and select automation. And there's a whole flows, or excuse me, automation uh, app that's specific to flows. So it allows you to uh, create filtered lists. It allows you to see, you can see those sections where you have errored flows, flows that have errored recently, things like that. And then in another, another piece we'll see in just a second, um, you can create all kinds of list views and, and other things based off of some of these uh, new functionalities, which we'll see in just a second, like categories and subcategories. So all of your flows now have two new fields on the setup or on the um, setup page called um, categories and subcategories. You can put them your flows in the categories and subcategories, then you can build list views of those categories and subcategories in your flow automation application or flow app. So really nice, that allows getting more, more and more feature rich, can make it easier to understand, to um, 
slice and dice our, our, our flows. And if you need certain users to run flows and other users to not run flows, you can actually enable a restrict user access to run flows. Um, this is a system setting. Um, so if you go into critical updates, there is, you can turn this on. And then what that'll, what that'll allow you to do after you've turned it on is you have to apply either permission or a profile adjustment, something that allows the users to run a flow. So uh, allow access to flows or run flows permission. You see here, add the run flows permissions to the permission set. Um, when this is currently, I think all users can run flows um, or they need permission to, to run flows, but this allows you to, uh, from an org perspective, turn default to do not run flows and then you add permissions to users who want to run flows. Um, and then the last piece here is fine tune access. So again, similar to the permission set, you now have or will now have access to permissions that allow for certain, um, allow users to use or view certain elements within a flow. So if you have somebody who is, let's say you've got a junior developer or junior somebody um, who needs to create flows, but you don't want them to create flows that delete records, you can give them access to flows and not give them access to the delete records component or um, element within the flow. You can actually specifically give or not give that ability through a permission um, to a user who builds flows as an example. So you can see the, the, the elements there. You can limit subflows, loops, get records, deletes, collections, et cetera. So that's, um, that's nice. Again, the, uh, it's all about least privilege and um, making sure that you have the admin has control. And I think that is it. Yeah, that is all. So that is summer. That is the highest level of summer. Those are the things that interested me. Those are the things that I thought would interest you. There's a lot in there um, as well. So there's a whole section on the community section, an entire section on analytics that I don't get into because I just haven't, I can't speak well enough to it to, to make it uh, helpful. Um, and then of course the sales, all the sales pieces, there's just a ton in general. But um, you know you know where you live, what part of Salesforce you live in and what part of Salesforce you um, leverage. And so just go find those sections. Um, but these things I think are gonna make all of our lives a little bit easier. Um, and yeah, so let's just see. Anybody has any questions, I'm gonna stop sharing. But if anybody has any questions, please feel free to uh, to shout them out. Yeah, Jennifer, no more object count for the, uh, if you're using flows for, um, just, is the collection there? <laughs> is it blank? Yes or no, who cares? Yeah, um, and then yeah, the null stuff is, exciting somewhat exciting it's just easier for everybody but um yeah that fine tune access there's no way still to give because we have clients sometimes who don't give us admin rights in production and then it, we still want to be able to look at flows sometimes but we can't without <laughs> certain but there's no way to to give somebody like view only access to a flow <laughs> Still, right. Well, run. You'll need run flows, and then there's a there's a flows permission. I think you need the flows permission to build flows. That's yeah, the that's the yeah. the annoying thing is like in order to be able to view a flow, you have to give somebody access to basically build a flow. But like I I just want to be able to see it, not build flows. <laughs> So, yeah, no, this is, is, um, it's frustrating because a lot of clients won't give us the access. So, yeah, this is good components within that within flows, the flow builder. So, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I will always give you access to the flow. So, yeah, Allison shows up in the door. <laughs> I say, here's how about the flow. And we'll get right. access in sandbox and stuff, but a lot of times, whatever sandbox we're in isn't up to date or. You know, for whatever reason, they, their admins are building directly in production. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, anything in there jumps out that people are excited about? Or, I mean, there's a lot in there to be excited about, let's be honest. But um, specifically, I'm just looking to see if anybody has any. That I want to see the profiles and permission set summaries. Um, that is going to be a big deal. Um, you can create all kinds of, you know, you know, I think if you've looked at some of the other summary tabs and some of the other list views for within setup, this is going to be very similar to that. Um, you know, we talked about it a couple weeks ago where, you know, they've completely restructured or rebuilt setup elements of setup so that it can be consistent within the back end. So we're going to see more and more of these summary views, more and more of these lists and filterable lists, and, um, you know, I think inline editing of some of this CRUD is going to be available as well. Uh, maybe not this release. I think it might be next release. Um, so if you have, you know, you have to turn off something, uh, you can do it right through the UI in that summary view. So it's just going to get the, you know, the, the momentum is going to build on all of those pieces as well. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed. All right. So. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna stop the recording and we'll just go off and chit chat for a little bit. I have questions in general uh, for some people here. So uh, thank you for joining us here. Don't leave just yet, I'm just stopping the recording. It's a matter of YouTube wrap up. But um, uh, thanks for joining us and then you know check the Trailblazer community for groups near you and for our next adventure. And we hope that you guys will uh, join us on the next one as well. So I'm going to now. Got that.